Hello guys! In today's Procreate video tutorial, I'm gonna show you the easy way to create a landscape with a railroad bridge and a train using my custom nature brushes. You can follow this tutorial even if you're a complete beginner to Procreate. I will guide you through the process step by step. Please download all tutorial files for free in the video description below. And if you are ready, let's get started! To start working, we need to create a new canvas. I like to work on a vertical canvas with a size of 2K by 2.5K pixels. DPI is set to 300 and color profile is display P3. These are the settings I normally use. In today's tutorial bundle, you will find a color palette with 28 colors and a few brushes from my latest nature brush set. All these files are free to download in the video description. If you'd like to get the full nature set, tens of other premium brush packs and watch exclusive video tutorials, you can check out my Patreon page, it is also linked in the video description. With that being said, let's start drawing. In the first part of the video, we will draw a railroad bridge that will be in the center of our composition. Next we will add a train and finish our work with a green summer landscape background. Since the base color for the bridge will be light, to make it visible, we should change the background first. To do that, let's tap on the background color and select number 1 from the palette. Now let me go back to the palette and grab color 13. That will now work great on the blue background. Also from inking brushes, I'll select ink bleed. I started to use this brush a lot lately. It gives this natural touch to a line and its edges are not as smooth as technical pen or monoline. So we can set the size to 7%. And instead of drawing a horizontal line, Let's give it a bit of perspective. I'll start drawing from the left side of the canvas to the right. If we hold on a second, we can adjust the angle. Now we need to draw a few arcs under this line. I'll start from the right side. Make an arc going down. And from this point, we can now draw another line at some distance. And to adjust its angle, I will click on Edit. Then draw another line. And connect them with an arc. I will start drawing it. And then also wait. It can be edited. I will try to match all the tips. If it's not matching perfectly, we can use a razor just to fix it. Now it looks fine. Let me continue and go more to the left. So we need to draw one more line, also make it straight, then another one on the left and also connect them. I will start from this point and draw like this. Let me also edit this shape. And fix it. Here we can draw one more shape. Drawing a line again. And then an arc like this. Let me match it. And try to fill. Now to adjust all these arcs, we can use liquify from adjustments. Let's open it and select push. I have pressure set to maximum, size is at 45% for now and there is no distortion or momentum. We can start pushing the arcs to the sides, so it doesn't look so perfect. Also we can make these columns wider at the bottom. Also by pushing them, but still they need to go straight, so it doesn't look like the bridge is falling. I 
I will push it here on top. Just to make it look more artistic. We can work on this one too. Okay, I think now it is fine. We can create a layer under this one. So we need to drag it. And then select color 14. To draw the inner part. Using the same brush. I will start here. So it will go this way. Here we can also add a straight line. Then I will outline the invisible part of it. Make sure we have all lines connected. And after that drag the color inside. Like this. On this one we can see the left side. So we can start from here. Draw an arc first. It will go almost parallel. And after that I will also draw a line. That will go down. Let's fix this connection. Then also paint here, behind the light part. And after that we can try to fill it. Also adjust color drop threshold. So there are no gaps between the lines. It worked well for me. Let's continue to this one. And do it in a similar way. So first I'm drawing an arc here on top. It may go a little wider. So if we wait a second, we can also adjust it. Now all we need to draw a line. Like this. I'll connect it here and also the invisible part. Fill in it. And on this one I will add a small part on top. So it's like a tiny part of the arc. Let it start from here. Then we also need to outline it on top. And fill. Okay. If you'd like to fix this part with liquify, you can do that. I think I will keep it like this. So now to add the shading, we can create a layer on top of this one. And add a clipping mask. It's the tool I used most of the time. We need to select this dark color 15. Then go to Selection, switch to Rectangle and activate Color Fill. Let's outline these two parts. So they will be recolored. And on the next part, I want to use a brush from painting that's called Nico Roll. It's a very nice textured brush. We can set the size to around 19% and draw with an angle here on this part. A little upper than this transition between the arc and lines. We can make a stroke and then adjust it. Then I will just go down and make more strokes below. If you wish, you can paint it all or keep a subtle texture. It's totally up to you. Now we can go to this layer with light color and also add a layer with the clipping mask right above it. We can now select color 16 from the palette and try to continue this line.
We can also edit it. And then paint. Also here. Okay, now it's ready. Let's go ahead and add one more layer. I will place it above. Now we can pick this dark color from the shaded part. Go back to selection. Switch back to freehand. And also deactivate color fill. We won't need it. Let's tap on this edge, a little lower than the top side. And then here. Try to make it almost parallel, but on the right side it may go a little wider. To follow the perspective. Like this. Now we need to outline it at the bottom. And tap here to finish the outline. So we will have this selection. Now let's tap on the brush to activate it. We can lower the size a little bit. I've set it to 11%. And I will draw here. We can also wait a second. And edit the line. It needs to go under the selection. Like this. And it will cover the blue part. We need to close editing. Let's now pick the color from here. And continue this line. Let me rotate the canvas. So I'll draw from here. And try to match these two lines. Like this. We can make this angle a bit bigger to make a wider line. If you need, you can fix this part manually. To add a couple of details, we can go back to Inkin and pick Ink Bleed. I want to draw something imitating bricks. So I will draw two horizontal lines. They may have different length. Then I will draw a shorter line. It will go vertically. Then on the side. And another one under this one. We can draw a few more details like this somewhere else. For example here. They may also look a little different. So I will add a few lines first. And then draw vertically. It will be enough. Let's consider the bridge finished for now and draw the train. So I will group all these layers. For that I'll select them and click group. Now we can click on this plus button to add a new layer. Let's keep it here for now. And then select base color for the train. It will be number 15. We can actually use ink bleed again. Let's draw the first line with perspective. It will be the top of the train. So on the right side, it will go a little wider. Then I will finish the shape like this. We need to draw another line at the bottom. Let's match it with the bridge. And after that fill the shape. We can adjust the edges if needed. And now it is fine. We can start adding more elements. 
So let me create a new layer. Then I will grab this dark color that is almost black. It's number 21. Now I will go to calligraphy and select monoline. I want to draw a rectangle with rounded corners. So this brush will work perfectly. Because it has circles on the edges. Let me just set the size to around 46%. Draw a horizontal line first. We can do it approximately like this. Then I will tap on the canvas to make it go strictly horizontal. And after that I will draw another short line that will go down. We can also tap to make it go strictly vertical. After that we can move it. Let's now duplicate the layer. Click on the arrow, flip it vertical and horizontal. If it's not matching perfectly, you can tap to move it. Now we need to merge these two layers and then fill. This is how you make a rounded rectangle in Procreate. It has these corners. Now we need to adjust it and put it inside the train. So I'm going back to transformation menu. We can first switch to freeform and drag it this way. I will move it down. Then also rotate it. It will go up like this. I will keep a bigger distance on top. And make it small at the bottom. Now we can switch to distort. And make the right edge vertical. By dragging this point to the right. We can deselect now. And if you'd like to make the edges even more rounded, you can use Liquify in Push. Just make the size low and push the edges like this. Now it is fine. I will move it more to the left side. So it takes almost half of the image. And on this area I want to add a few windows. I'm going to create a new layer above this one. Then go back to the color palette and grab color 23. We can draw a small rectangle by using selection. I will just switch to rectangle in this menu and make a shape like this. We can also fill it. Now we also need to distort it to make it follow the shape. I will put it here. Maybe stretch it a bit up. And make it longer. Like this. I think here we can use a razor. Just remove the corners. We can now duplicate this layer a few times. And then move them to the right. Try to keep the same distance between the windows. I will move this one. Then duplicate it one more time. 
put it here maybe a couple more times Let me also duplicate the very first layer with a window and it'll go to the left, like this. Now we can merge these layers for the windows, all of them, after that duplicate it and clip. Let's also alpha lock the layer, so we can recolor it easily. I will grab the lighter color 24. Go back to the layer, tap on it, and select fill layer option. Now if you click on the arrow, we can drag it to the side. To reveal the shadows. Let me actually go back to the layer, it's the base one, and I will make it slightly darker by lowering the brightness. It looks better now. So now we can add a new layer on top of our layers, also clip it, and select color 22, which is grey. I will also switch to ink bleed. And draw a line like this on top. It can be adjusted. And after that I will add a few more lines. That will go vertically. Inside the windows. You can draw one or two. So it'll look like there is something inside the train. Alright, I think enough windows. We can add a door. It'll be located here. I will merge all the layers for the windows. And after that create a new one. With this grey color, we can first create outlines using the same brush. Let's also draw a vertical rounded rectangle. So I will make two parallel lines first. Not very wide. And then connect them on top. And also at the bottom. It'll be a window inside the door. Now that we have the outlines, we can create a layer below. If we use this layer as reference, we can go back here and fill it with a color. Let's select number 9. I will slide to the left side. And I think we can actually make it darker. So I will lower the brightness to 46%. We can also duplicate the layer, clip it, grab a lighter color, let's say 23. I will remove reference, because we don't need it anymore. Now go here and drag the color. Let's now go to transformation. And move the layer to reveal the shadow. It'll go to the left. Like this. Now we can draw the door around the window. So let's first select grey color. Or we can pick this one, number 28. 
and draw a shape like this. It will have two straight lines on the sides. Oops. We need to go to another layer. So we can actually merge this. Then create a new one. And after that draw a straight vertical line. On the side. Let's add another one on the left. Make it parallel. And connect them on top. Also make it rounded. Straight on top. And another rounded corner. Let me try to make it more parallel. Alright. I'll connect it here, like this. After that, duplicate the layer, go to this one and make it almost black. We can just recolor it all over the brightness. I'll set it to 15% and then move it. To the right side like this just tap in a couple of times now the door is also ready let's work on the frontal part let me merge all the layers for the door and i will create another one so we can put another window here so we can also first create the outlines Let's try to use color 22 again. And outline a window shape. It'll have a straight line on the left side. And look like a rounded triangle. Follow the shape. Let me adjust the shape a little. I will fix its angle. Then also use it as reference. I've created a layer under it. And we can first fill it with a dark color. Let's pick 21. We can fill this area. I will just alpha lock the layer. And then grab color 25. Let me select Nico rule. And make a stroke inside the shape. Just like this. Maybe this color is too light. So I'll select 23. We'll look better. Just paint slightly like this. It will look like shadow too. We can now merge these two layers. And add another one below. Let's now select color 21 again. We actually need to clip this layer to the base. So I'll drag it down. Put it above layer 7. And then just clip. Let's go back to ink bleed. And draw the head of the train. It will go parallel to this window. To its side and then to the bottom. Let's connect it and fill it. Let me make lines more straight. Okay, it is ready. 
we can finish the shading. Let's use the same color and we can actually stay on the same layer. Just select Nico Rule Brush. We can set the size to around 18% and add the texture here. Just paint it slightly. After that I will add one more layer. Also clip it. Pick this coral color. 26. Go back to ink bleed. And draw a line. It will go along the train. On top part of it. Let's stop here. Near the cabin. And from this point we need to draw a curve. Like this. Now we can add one more layer between these two and it'll get clipped right away. Let's set it to soft light and pick white color from the color disk. So I will go here and double tap on the light area. Let's switch to Nico rule and add a highlight on top of the train by making a stroke on top of it. It will go horizontally. We can edit the line. Then I lower the size a little bit. And continue the stroke to the side. This way. From here it will go a little horizontally. To the left. Now it got some volume. So we can create a layer under the train. To finish this electricity part. Actually let me go back here. I just want to make the top more highlighted. So I made the size smaller and making more strokes on the edge. Ok, now I think it is better. Let's go here to the newly created layer. Then grab black color. Actually it's not purely black. It's number 21. I'll select ink bleed so we can draw. Draw a line with an angle. It'll go approximately to the half of the train. Maybe a little more. Here on the edge I will make it rounded. Let's connect it. I drag the color. Then I will add this small part. We can paint it manually. Then another one that will be flat. And from here I will start from the right. First match it. Then it will go upper. And I'm connecting it. Let me try to use liquify to push it down. It just went too high. Alright. Let's now also connect it. Fill it. And highlight it too. So I will add a layer above it, also clip it and set to soft light mode. 
we need to pick white color together with Nico Rule brush. Let's just highlight it slightly on the left side, a little bit here, and on the edges, just like this. Okay, I think now the train is totally ready. We can start working on the background. So I will select all the lace for the train and also group them. We can actually rename the groups. So let me call this one train. And this one will go for bridge. All right. Now it looks more organized. I will just add one more layer, so we can paint a big tree on the front. It will have a few colors. For the base color, let me grab number 9. And there is a brush in the nature set. I've put it in the free bundle. It's called geometric foliage. Let's use it. I will set the size to 25%. And without even painting the tree trunk, we can create this foliage shape. It may go down. And I will make more strokes here. Also on top. Now let's add one more layer above this one. Clip it. And select the next color number 10. We can apply it on top to build volume, like this. Let's make the left side more highlighted with even more colors. We can apply them on the same layer. I will just grab color 11, that is even lighter, and make more strokes right on the edges. Like this. We can put the color somewhere here. And after that pick color number 12. It will be the lightest one. So we can add it more on the edge. Like this. You can tap or make a stroke. The brush works in both ways. Ok. Let me just make one more brush stroke. Maybe also here. Then I will merge these two layers. And duplicate to make it more opaque. Now we can merge them. I think we can now work on the background. So we need to create a layer under the bridge group. I'll drag it down. And draw some grass. This time I will start with color number 4. And in the same brush set, there is a brush with foreground grass. So I'm gonna use it. Let me set the size to around 16%. And I will start painting horizontally. Moving the pencil to the sides like this. Back and forth. We can make the edge a bit curvy. Just paint it this way. I think I will drag it a bit down. So it doesn't take too much space. Ok. Now we can add a few more colors. I'll continue with color number 5. Making these lines here and there. And also changing the pressure. 
Let's just make sure blue color is not seen. Let's now add a darker tone. It's number 6. I'll put it somewhere here. On some other areas. And also at the bottom. So it'll look darker. We can now add a few highlights with color 7. For example, I will highlight this edge in just a little bit. Then make a stroke above the dark color so it'll get volume. This way. A little more. If you like, you can play around with colors more and add some yellow tones or even blue if you like. I will finish it with color number 8. Put it more in the bottom. Now to make this part even darker, we can do the following. I will duplicate the layer. Set it to multiply mode, but it'll all get dark. So we can add a layer mask to it. Grab black color. I will do it from the color disk. And fill it. So it'll be removed. Now we can start revealing it. For that we need to select white color. Then I will also change the brush to soft edge paint. It is also from the nature set. We can make the size bigger. And lower the opacity just a little bit. Then I will paint at the bottom. To reveal the dark grass. It will also get slightly textured. This way. The more we press, the darker color will get. This is how layer mask works. It's a very nice way to work with shadows. Okay, let's consider this part ready. Maybe we can just add a few flowers, schematically. For that I'll create a layer above this one. Go to the color palette and first we can add this yellow color, number 20. There is a brush with tiny birds, but it can be used to draw flowers that are on the background. The size is set to 8% and I will start tapping on the grass. If you make the size even smaller, like 2 or 3 percent, we can add more flowers on the faraway area. This way creating some depth. Let's also pick some whitish color, can be number 19 or 13, I think 19 is better. I will make a few strokes with this small size first and after that increase it. Tap a few times here on the front. It looks like summer. And I like it. Ok, I think enough flowers. We can work on the sky. For that I'll create a layer right above the background color first. Let's select color 2 from the palette. And also soft edge paint. 
we can set the size to maximum and keep opacity at around 83%. Just start making strokes like this. Go down. Then change the color into the next one. And continue making strokes. We can switch between these three colors until they look blended. I will even go to base color. That was number one. Make strokes on top of the canvas. And at the bottom as well, but with low pressure. In the end it'll look like this. Now I also want to add a few clouds. So we can add one more layer. Let's place it above this one and pick the first color for the clouds. It'll be 17. I will use the same brush, but at a lower size. We can also set it to full opacity. Let me set the size to 24% and draw the first cloud shape. Let's use this color to create cloud shapes. I will be moving the pencil this way. Let's add another shape. It can be bigger. Go more to the right side. Let me actually move it a little. And then I will draw a bigger one. It may go even more up. and have a different shape. We can also draw on the left side. But to balance the composition, I will make it bigger. Like this. Now we can alpha lock this layer and apply more colors. So first I will switch to number 18 and apply it on top of the shapes. On this one. And to make it gradual. I will press more on the edge and lower the pressure while going down. Let's highlight the edge on this cloud and I will do it exactly the same way. Keep dark color at the bottom for the shadow. Let's also paint here. We can divide this cloud into a few shapes. Like this. And after that I will paint on the left. Let's highlight this part. Then skip some distance. And go down. I will finally highlight it here. And go even lighter with color number 19. 
so I will put it here on the edge. Then also on this one. On a bigger shape. Here I will lower the size a little bit and add a couple of highlights. Some part of the clouds are hidden behind the tree, so I won't paint it all. Now let's add highlights here on the opposite side. And on this one. I think I will select Smudge Tool, set it to Soft Edge Paint Brush, and remove Alpha Lock, so we can work on the edges a little. We can soften them, and to make it gradually, I will lower the opacity. Just smudge it a little bit. Ok, now I'm quite satisfied with the result. Let me keep it. And I will add a few birds. We can create another layer. Let's place it above this one. And we need to pick some light color. Let it be 13. I will use tiny birds brush again. Let me just pick the correct brush size, it will be 7%. I will tap a few times here. And also inside this arc. But here I will lower the size. Just tap a few times. Now it looks quite balanced. If you look at the brush set, I included a brush with faraway mountains, that you can also use. It's just in case you want to change the landscape. For example, you can add a lake here. And if you want to use mountains brush, you can pick any of these colors. And just make strokes like this. It is very easy. I will stop at this point and consider the drawing finished. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. For more tutorials and brush sets, check out my Patreon page. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon!